What is going on everybody? Welcome back to Red Sea Radio. My name is Corbin and with the Red Sox playing really bad baseball right now, it seems like everyone's main focus is on the trade deadline. What the Red Sox are going to do and how it is going to affect this team. But we've already talked about Red Sox potential targets, who they could target at the deadline. We've talked about guys that could possibly be on the trading block and we could be saying goodbye to within the next couple of days. And we've talked about whether or not the Red Sox should be buyers or sellers. So what we're going to do today is something a little bit different. I want to know if you guys like this kind of content. If you do, let me know in the comment section down below. But we're going to focus on a trade that's already been made. We're talking about the Mookie Betts trade today. And mostly because I keep seeing stuff about Juan Soto, a potential MVP caliber player, and what the Nationals are requiring to get him. And it's reminded me a lot of that Mookie Betts trade. So it's been two years. We've seen some of the impact that these guys have had. So we're going to talk about whether or not the Red Sox won the Mookie Betts trade or not. But before we get into that, do me a favor. Make sure you guys have hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. If you're new here, we talk Red Sox content almost every single day. Also, make sure you guys are hitting the like button on this video as well. It helps it out a ton. And again, if you guys enjoy this type of content, let me know in the comment section down below and maybe we'll revisit some other trades that the Red Sox have made recently. Thank you all very much for clicking on this one. Let's get into it. This was probably the most infamous trade that Bloom has made and might ever will make. It is also one of the most infamous trades for the Red Sox in the last five to 10 years, I would say, maybe of all time. This is something that always gets brought up and it's something that everyone always talks about. For those of you who don't remember, Mookie Betts was traded to the Dodgers in 2020 along with David Price. The Red Sox got Alex Verdugo, who at the time was the number one prospect in the Dodgers system. He was also the 35th ranked prospect in all of baseball. They got Jeter Downs, who was the third highest rated prospect at the time and 44th in all of baseball. And they got Connor Wong, who at the time was the Dodgers 29th overall prospect in their system. Mookie was and still is one of the top talents in all of baseball. So on paper, this trade makes sense. Two of their top three prospects, you're eating some of David Price's contract and you get Connor Wong as well. So let's take a look at how this trade worked out for the Dodgers. Mookie Betts, since being with the Dodgers, played three seasons, including 2020. 20, where he has an OPS plus of 35, an average of 271, 62 home runs. He has been second in MVP voting, won a gold glove, a silver slugger, has been a two-time all-star. Really the only reason he wasn't a three-time all-star was because of that COVID year. And he won a World Series, where in that postseason, he hit 269 with two home runs. Like I said, one of the best talents in baseball. The Dodgers also acquired David Price, who's found a little bit of a different role in the Dodgers system in that bullpen. He didn't play in 2020, he opted out because of COVID, but in 2021, he had an ERA plus of 104. And in 2022, he currently has a 135 ERA plus as well. So he's been above average for them as well. Safe to say the Dodgers got a good return in their trade. Now let's take a look at what the Red Sox got, because for the first time in the three seasons since the Mookie Betts trade, we've really seen Seen all three of these guys at a major league level. So I think it's an appropriate time to really talk about what kind of value these guys bring to the table. The main piece of the puzzle for the Red Sox was Alex Verdugo. And in two and a half seasons, Alex Verdugo has been pretty good. He's an OPS plus of 103, which is slightly above league average. He has a 286 average with 25 total home runs and an OPS of 759. He's a pretty average defender, but at the same time, I think a lot of that is because of the fact that he was moving around a ton in the first two years that he was here. This year, he's been strictly in left field and has really developed into a decent left fielder. Jeter Downs, who was the second piece of the puzzle for the Red Sox, the third highest ranked prospect for the Dodgers at the time, really has been struggling since he got to the Red Sox. In his minor league years in 2021, he had an average of just 190 with a 606 OPS. And this season currently in the minors, he hasn't done much better. He's a 217 average currently in the minor leagues with an 812 OPS, which isn't terrible. That OPS is not a terrible number. This is also the first time that we have seen a decent sample size of what Jeter Downs could do in the majors, and it didn't exactly work out as planned. In 14 games, yes, it's a small sample size. Jeter Downs has just an OPS plus of 16. For those of you who don't know, OPS plus, the league average is 100, meaning that Jeter Downs is 84% worse than the average major league player at the plate. Not exactly what you want to hear for a guy that you acquired for one of the best talents 
Downs in all of baseball. Again, pretty small sample size, but through 14 games, Jeter Downs has a 154 average, a 427 OPS. There is still some potential there with Jeter Downs. My problem is, is what that potential will be. And I'm not exactly super excited for the future of Jeter Downs. Now, the last piece of this puzzle for the Red Sox is Connor Wong. Like I said at the time, one of the lower rated prospects in the Dodgers system, still a top 50 prospect guy and a guy with a lot of potential. And he's actually been fairly decent in the minor leagues. In the minor leagues, he hit 256 with a 731 OPS in 2021 with eight bombs. And throughout 2022 so far, he has a 267 average with a 729 OPS and six bombs. He's a really limited sample size in the majors, but combined in 2021 and 2022, Connor Wong has spent 11 games with the club. And in those 11 games, he has an OPS plus a 95, slightly below league average, but not anywhere close to where Jeter Downs was. And he has a 286 average and a 733 OPS. And those were all the pieces of this Mookie Betts David Price trade, which was really just a Mookie Betts trade and we wanted to offload David Price. So the question is, who won this trade? And I think it's a fairly simple question to answer and it's the Dodgers. Take a look at what I said Mookie Betts has accomplished since going to the Dodgers. He's an all-star, a multi-time all-star. He was second in MVP voting. He had a gold glove. He won a silver slugger. He helped them win a championship, right? Most people consider Mookie Betts a top 10 to top five player in all of baseball. The Red Sox did get Alex Verdugo, who has been a great piece to the Red Sox. He's developed into one of their core players, having some really big hits and some really big moments, which is kind of what he lives for. He's a very clutch player. He's developed into a league average, slightly league average, I would say left fielder. He has a slightly above league average bat in the couple years that he's been here, but I wouldn't put him in the superstar category. I would put him more into a supplementary role to the superstars like Bobby, like Devers, like JD was. And even I would say a supplementary role to what Trevor Story has been doing for the Red Sox. Not exactly that superstar level talent that I think the Red Sox had hoped from Alex Verdugo. As for Jeter Downs and Connor Wong, they have very limited sample size in the majors, but from what they have had in the majors, they aren't exactly impact players. To me, this trade, it just simply wasn't enough. We did what we had to do to get under the luxury tax after Dave Dombrowski gave money to Xander, after he gave money to Evaldi, and after he gave money to Sale, which I don't regret any of those. I think that Chris Sale's contract could be definitely up for debate, but what we got from Evaldi and what we got from Xander is, was well worth the money that we had spent. However, the trade that we made for Mookie Betts, again, it just wasn't enough. When we're talking about big time trades like this, this was a blockbuster type trade. I tend to look at what's currently going on. And one of the guys that I probably could compare to Mookie Betts, who is probably a better hitter than Mookie Betts, but all around. I think they're in the same tier is Juan Soto and the Nationals have already said for Juan Soto their starting point is your top five prospect, which makes sense. He's a superstar MVP perennial candidate, probably a future Hall of Famer like Mookie Betts was. And for the Red Sox, trading Mookie Betts meant that they got two top five prospects and a top 50 prospect. The Nationals are looking for five top five prospects as a starting point. And that makes sense. I think the Red Sox just simply did not get enough in this trade. And while Jeter Downs and Connor Wong still have time to develop, and I think there's still more for Verdugo to unlock, especially in the power department, I just just don't think that what we gave up was worth what we got in return. So in my opinion, the Dodgers very clearly won this trade, but I could be wrong. So let me know in the comment section down below. What do you guys think of this trade now that it's been a couple of years and now that we're starting to see the impact of the other players included in this Mookie Betts trade. And if, if you don't think that the Red Sox won this trade, which I'm assuming most of you won't, let me know what you would have wanted for a superstar like Mookie Betts. Let me know all your thoughts on this trade down below. And again, let me know if you guys like this this kind of content. I decided to switch it up a little bit and stop talking about current affairs because right now the current affairs of the Red Sox are not exactly great. Let me know all your thoughts down below. As always, if you've made it to the end of this video, do me a favor, make sure you guys have hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Like I said, if you're new here, we talk Red Sox content almost every single day. You made it to the end of this video, you clearly enjoy the content, you might as well hit that subscribe button, you might as well hit that like button. Both of those help out this channel a ton and would mean a lot to me. One last thing, if you guys really enjoyed this video, share with a friend or family member. See what their opinion is on this Mookie Betts trade. It would mean a lot. Thank you all very much for clicking on this one, and I will see you in the red seats.